directions and what I should say. I really struggled with it. But the funny thing about that is I've actually known what I was going to talk about if I was ever asked to do one on Sunday for over two years. A lot of people reached out to me when they heard that I was going to do it. And I know they had the best of intentions, but it only added to my stress and my second-guessing myself. Um, but I finally decided, you know, after a lot of prayer, God is in control. He is all-knowing. He knew what was in my heart to speak about, and I was still asked to speak. So I decided not to go with a safer topic and to go with my original idea. So um, I'm going to trust in him. Some of you may have noticed I said safer. Sorry, I'm very, very nervous today. <laughs> um, I said a safer topic. The topic I wanted to talk about is somewhat controversial in some, some circles, but an important one, especially for women, Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Wives, submit to your husbands. Today, that verse, verse is often seen as outdated, sexist, and for some, a reason not to believe in the Bible at all. If you look up the word submissive today, some examples of what you will find are, she followed like an obedient child, acknowledging your inferiority. You must consider your husband as your parent. Some synonyms are malleable, tame, and even slavish. One site says to be submissive means someone who gives up their rights and free will to be controlled by another. Reading those things, there is no question why so many women and young ladies don't want to be seen as submissive. God himself gave us free will. Are we supposed to give that up when we get married? I'm pretty sure anyone who knows me would know not any of those synonyms or descriptions would describe me. In fact, Chatty and David have actually discussed, or maybe more accurately commiserated with each other, <laughs> about how opinionated and strong-willed Natalie and I both are. Being a submissive wife does not equal doormat. I want, to, <laughs> I want to take a minute to talk about some strong, yet submissive wives from the Bible. And I'm sorry if I say some of these names wrong because my kids in my class know I'm not great with some of the pronunciations. Zipporah, the wife of Moses. Sensing that God was angry at her husband, she circumcised her son to save Moses. Imagine being the wife of Moses. It's easy to see that he had so much responsibility on him. But imagine how strong she had to be, and clearly she was. Jehoshaphat, wife of Jehoiada, rescued and kept hidden Joash, when Adaliah killed all of Ahaziah's sons to take the power for herself. The Bible doesn't tell us if she was, if Jehoshaphat, that was her mother or her stepmother, but it clearly didn't matter. Adaliah was willing to kill anyone in her family to have that power. And yet, Jehoshaphat must have been very courageous to hide the rightful king. Sarah, wife of Abraham, she followed wherever he led and even lied to Pharaoh to protect her husband at his bequest, which could have gotten her killed. These are faithful, strong, and courageous women, but also submissive wives. Being submissive does not mean less than. It does not mean having no opinion. God created man and saw that he needed a helper and companion, so God created woman. And then God appointed man as the head of the woman and family, just as God appointed Moses as the head of the Israelites. Moses was never to lead the Israelites to follow his will. God led Moses, and Moses led the Israelites. They were to follow Moses as Moses followed God. So ultimately, they were following God. Just as women are to marry a God-fearing man who will lead our families not based on their own will, but by the word of God. So by following our husbands, we are following God's will for our lives. Eve was tempted by the serpent and ate of the forbidden fruit, but it is said that Adam was the originator of sin, not Eve, because he was the head of their union. The weight of their sin fell heavier on him, though she was also given consequences. If we look back at the Israelites again, in Exodus 32, 7, they have sinned, again. <laughs> and God says to Moses, go down, because your people, who you brought out of Egypt, have become corrupt. That verse has always made me think 
of a parent who gets mad at their children and says to the other parent, look what your children have done. I wonder if Moses thought my people. Moses was appointed by God to lead the Israelites. And so it was his responsibility to pr protect them, to make sure that they were following God's will. So the blame for their sin was on him also. When we get married, our husbands are charged with a great responsibility to protect and lead their family. And we as women also have a responsibility to be a helper to our husbands and a role model to our children. Although you will not find the often you saying happy wife, happy life in the Bible, we do have the ability to make our husbands the happiest or the most miserable men on earth. Proverbs 12.4 says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is a rottenness in his bones. Proverbs 21.19 It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Some of you may agree with that. <laughs> there is a false belief that being submissive means we're weak, or we believe that we are inferior. The world tells us that to need another person is a weakness, but the Bible tells us a different story. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Matthew 19, 6, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And 1 Corinthians 11, 11, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. We were never supposed to be alone. However, any time there are two or more people, there are going to be disagreements. So one has to be the head, and God chose man for that role. That doesn't mean wives can't express their feelings or opinions to their husbands, or that husbands don't need to listen to their wives. <coughs> Those are both important things for a happy union. But in thinking again about Moses and the Israelites, they often would complain about their circumstances, question God, or even outright turn against God. And it often caused Moses to become angry and prideful, and at times to disobey God himself. They wouldn't follow him, and it made it more difficult for him to follow God. It can be the same way in marriage. If wives do not allow their husbands to leave the household, or if they constantly complain or berate him, husbands are more likely to become prideful to dig in their heels and not consider if what they're doing is God's will. But if a woman can be faithful enough to allow, and I say allow because being submissive, it doesn't mean being controlled, it's voluntary. We have to volunteer to be submissive to our husbands. Allowing her husband to lead, even when she disagrees, the husband will feel the weight of that responsibility and is much more likely to turn to God and say, Lord, I need you. I need to know that I am following your will for my family. So by submitting to our husbands as the head of our family, we're not only building a stronger foundation for our family, we're giving our husbands the room to be more godly men, as well as giving our children a framework to follow for them to have a happy marriage of their own. The most important thing to remember is in all things, we are to seek to glorify God. How better to do that? than to be a godly wife to our husbands and godly mothers to our children. To provide our husbands the opportunity to be transformed through his experience of God's love through his wife. And for wives also to be transformed through the love of God through their husbands. This went much faster than it did when I was practicing it. <laughs> I'm probably talking a little faster. I found this prayer online. It's by Dave Willis. <coughs> May your marriage always bring glory to God, joy to one another, and blessings to your family for many generations to come. May love and laughter fill your hearts and your home for all the days of our lives. May you face every challenge hand in hand, side by side, knowing that with God's grace, you'll conquer all obstacles together. May the world be a forever a better place because the two of you fell in love. In Jesus' name. Amen. And that is all I have. It went very, very fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you.